Creativity is the engine. Actually, this is not the title of my talk today, but it's an idea that I would like to share with you. I know it may sound like a vague cliche, but creativity is really the engine and the origin of the evolution, technological or none. If you are curious and creative, you do not need to discover a new subatomic particle to be disruptive. You maybe just can look things differently and apply existing technological means and material coming maybe from other industrial sector just to create something new that could have a major impact to society. Some examples? Well, nowadays everyone has a cell phone. I'm sure you also have one, and according to the rules, should be on a silent mode. Um, but many young people may not remember or not know that in my generation in the past, I used to have a cumbersome, huge tower PC, not very high performing. And then I used it to have a clock and a calendar on the wall. I used cameras with films, long development time for the pictures. Then I used to have a Walkman. Do you remember the Walkman? Walkman as the grandfather of the iPod. Then I used to write letters instead of emails. And more recently, I also purchased a GPS navigator, just replacing paper uh, maps. And then, of course, everyone had a phone, a telephone connected into the wall. Now, all these functionalities are integrated in a single device, a small, beautiful, teeny, portable, mine is not very beautiful, but telephone, a cell phone. And with your cell phone today, you can do almost everything. Probably the only thing that you're not able to do is make a coffee, but you would be lost with that, right? Yeah. And have you ever thought how so, such a small thing can do all these things? Well, how can you bring all these functionalities in such a small volume and then ensure the performances that you need to have? This is the challenge that we face today. The trend is to miniaturize everything, to integrate in a small volume fluidics, optics, mechanics, electronics. Like in your cell phone, you have the micro lens for your camera, you have an accelerometer to detect your position, and you have a microchip. But the paradox is that to produce small things, you need huge infrastructures. You need clean rooms and complex manufacturing processes. According to an estimate, clean rooms need 90 to 95% of the energy budget just to control the air. So you can imagine the investment, the big investment that you have in, in terms of resources, time, and energy that you have to get to produce small things. And this is something that maybe suffocates the creativity and the um, innovation by small companies and universities. So the dream, the dream is to turn a piece of material directly into a complex 3D micro devices, which can integrate all these functionalities and can overcome the barriers of complex manufacturing processes. And we thought, why not use a simple material, a traditional material which can fit very well to several uses, why not use glass? Glass has several features. It's transparent, dielectric, isotropic, stable, perpetual. What more? It's biocompatible. What more? Glass is elastic. Look at that. Would you have imagined that glass is so elastic? Well, if you have observed optical glass fibers for data transmission, well, you know that you can bend them if you reduce the dimension to the lighter. We thought, how can we use these advantages for other applications in other domains? We are in Lugano, in Switzerland. What are the typical products in Switzerland? Let's say, beside Heidi, the chocolates, and the Swiss Summer Duck. Watches. I'm very aware that watches are made, at least mechanical ones, are made by on average, 250 to 180 components. And that uh, most of the watches in Switzerland are not simply watches, but are chronometers. Yes, if they succeed in keeping one second precision per year, 
then the official Swiss control of chronometers can certify them as such. But to ensure that, of course, precision, accuracy, quality, the watch must be perfect. And that's why the watchmaker industry is following a long and famous tradition. Some of the mechanisms in the watches are more than 100 years old. So how can you bring innovation in such a field where you have tradition, prestige, perfect, uh, perfect watches, beautiful watches, which very often are handed down from generation to generation without looking at that picture. Most of the components here are two-dimensional, eventually two and half-dimensional. If we could print the complete mechanism out of glass directly with a 3D printer, you would avoid assembling, you would overcome all the typological issues, let's say how you combine parts and let move them together, and you could probably also give new opportunities in the design of new piece of art. We are talking about a 3D printing technology which is able to turn a piece of glass directly into the 3D micro device, integrating multiple, multiple features and functionalities. A technology which can af uh, offer affordable rapid prototyping. It's a specific manufacturing process that we developed within a European project involving several entities in different countries and uh, through a different expertise. This is an example on how collaboration is very important to give to um, industries cutting edge like medtech and uh, watchmakers the possibility of having a new, in, a new inno innovative technology. And I have big dreams from what this technology or this innovation can bring us. Let the creativity run. We can imagine, for instance, a lab on a chip which is able to measure with just one drop your, your blood and give you this information through very precise microfluidic channels, micromechanics, and optical sensors. Or you can imagine to detect your blood pressure through a contact lens with integrated already um, electronics. Or can you imagine to print in just one square centimeters the entire human rights uh, charters uh, in a 5D identity memory out of glass, which you can send to Mars and that you can read in thousands of years. There is a lot of many other applications that this technology can cover, and this affects all of us, from the bankers to the medtech, to the artists, to the civil engineer. And this, thank you, thanks to this technology, um, the university and the lab centers have a 3D um, rapid prototyping technology able to boost innovation and industries can produce very complex 3D micro devices. But creativity can be also awakened by the observation of the nature. In my previous life, in my previous startup, I used to install sensors, optical fiber sensors, into bridges or in tunnels or in dams. And we created the so called smart structures. Smart structures are structures which simulate the human body and the nerves that you have in, your human, in, in the body. And what they do is that they detect uh, the deformation, for instance, on the bending of the structures, and then react, activating um, the, the actuators to reposition the bridge in the, posi in the original position, or by stopping the traffic with the traffic light in case of danger. Innovation in technology, to be creative, you need collaboration and contribution across the sectors. Needs, different needs require different expertise. And needs and solutions can come from different fields, areas, environments, cultures. We are in Switzerland, a very small country. And this is a confederation which uh, bases its rules, laws, and behavior on the cooperation among the cantons. Cantons which speak different languages, which integrate different uh, environment, climates, um, culture, histories, and industrial specificities. Can you imagine what you can do if you could bring in a room a doctor, a civil engineer, a mechanical engineer, an artist, a sportman? Imagine the potential of creativity that you can generate. The potential for future innovation depends 
on this cross pollination, which is inspiring ourselves. And this, not a Swiss level or local level. You have to imagine that worldwide, universal. Creativity is the engine, I said, yes. Creativity is the engine for the evolution and should never become its limit. Everything depends on your curiosity and your deep desire to contribute to universal evolution. Thank you.